Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. To those of you celebrating uh, Christmas today, have a very Merry Christmas and to everyone have a great sort of festive season. Uh, I just wanted to make a little video today that sort of uh, uh, was not necessarily sort of Christmas related but that I thought would sort of tie in reasonably well. So I'm going to start with a Currently Inked. Uh, this is what I've got going this week. I've tried to really pare things down. So I have six pens uh, and then what I thought I'd do is I'd do a quick like wish list thing and the wish list isn't necessarily um, pens that exist that I want but things that I wish would sort of happen within the pen community and the pen industry uh, perhaps uh, I, uh, some items that I think would be cool to see on the market. So, let's start with the currently inked. As I said, I've got six pens. Uh, these are in no sort of particular order, um, but yeah, I thought I'd uh, just show you what I'm writing with at the moment. So we start with the Estabrook Esty. I have the co Cobalt Blue. Um, I've done a review of this pen if you want to check it out. I really like it. Um, on Instagram, I put up a post about what I should ink this with, and I listed three inks that I had samples of sitting there. One was um, Colorverse Supernova, uh, Jay Herban Bleu de Profonde and uh, Detriment as Sherlock Holmes. And Sherlock Holmes was the one that everyone, so most people sort of suggested. So I've inked it up in here. It's one of those inks that I've used a lot over the last couple of years. Um, in fact, one of the, uh, so one of the people on um, social media from Goulet Pens suggested this ink to me based on a couple of my uh, preferences and I got a sample of it. And I've gone through a few samples of this ink now. Uh, so I think it's time I should get a bottle. Uh, normally I, if I like a sample, I get a bottle, hence why I have over 240 bottles of ink or something. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 for some reason I've resisted getting this. I've got so many blues, things like the Dadramentus Giuseppe Verdi, uh, which is not dissimilar, uh, Oxford Blue from Diamine. These are inks that I use a lot, uh, so Sherlock Holmes, uh, this inking in this pen is going to be what decides it for me whether I get a bottle in the new year. Um, so yeah, I'll just run through each pen that I've got inked and then we'll do a quick writing sample and then we'll come back and do the rest of the video. So the Estabrook SD uh, with Detrimentus Sherlock Holmes. Next I have my Lamy Studio which is really climbing up my list of favourite pens. Uh, it's n not a fancy pen and a lot of people, there are lots of things about the pen that people don't like but I really quite like it and I like the way it writes. So I've inked this with uh, Dimine from one of the 150th series, um, Blood Orange, which is a really cool link. Next I have my Faber-Castell E-Motion, which for a long time was going to be right at the top of my list of pens for this year and then all of a sudden it got sort of knocked out. Uh, for no fault of its own, it's a wonderful pen. I bought this uh, in Vienna when I was there in May um, and there's a, a really great pen shop, although the staff there were a little bit sort of forceful, one might say. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice pen. I've inked this with Colorverse Hubble Zoom, which is a really interesting ink. Next I have, which one should I go next? Ah, Pilot Metropolitan. Simple pen. This is the, the grey sort of version. It's nothing, nothing fancy about this pen. It's got a basic medium nib on it. Um, but I think this is Robert Ostakaki, uh, and it's a really, like, it doesn't match <laughs> the pairing necessarily. A couple of my pairings don't match this time, but it's nice in this pen, and uh, this is a really lovely pen just to sort of throw in your pocket and carry around. Next, I have, uh, this is another one of those pairings that doesn't quite match up. Um, it's my Monteverde uh, Ascenza. Um, and I've inked this with Robert Oster Peppermint Candy. Now this is one of the only pens I use where I really like um, the stub nib. So it's a 1.1, it writes really smoothly. For a lefty using stub nibs, uh, as you would may, may have seen in one of my other videos, it's not necessarily the easiest way to uh, nib to write with, uh, but this one does write quite nicely, and with the Peppermint Candy being one of the shimmy, uh, Shake and Shimmy inks, uh, it's yeah, quite nice, and I thought at this time of year it's a nice sort of festive one to, to have in there. And then last but not least, this is a pen that uh, sort of is um, very new to me, last couple of days. Uh, and it's not a fancy pen by any stretch, it's one of the cheapest pens, uh, it's certainly, the, looking at my list, it's the cheapest pen in this uh, currently inked. Um, it's designed as a school pen, it's literally one of those pens you buy from the, 
you know, the, the office supply store and it comes hanging on the rack in a little bit of plastic. Uh, it is the Faber-Castell, and it's just called the school or the uh, school fountain pen or uh, in German the Schulfühler. Uh, and so, yeah, it comes wrapped like in, you know, plastic with some cartridges and it's not a fancy pen. It's made of plastic, it's got this little metal clip, but the clip is springy, it's functional, it's tight enough to keep it in your shirt. And I actually really like, I'll show you in more detail on the other angle, but I really quite like the design of this pen. It's um, it's just a simple, really basic pen. It's got like a little triangular grip, you know, but that they are fine for me. Um, nothing fancy, odd sort of shape nib, I'm not sure if, you know, like, but it writes nicely, and I've got this inked with Lamy Black. And at the moment, this is a, on my bullet journal. So those are the pens I have inked. Let's have a quick uh, look at them in more detail. Uh, I'll do a very quick little writing sample, nothing fancy, just to, so you can see the, the inks. Let's do that now. All right, let's do this writing sample. So um, here I have a Rhodia uh, Heritage uh, graph pad, which um, the first time I've used it, I got this as a gift uh, for uh, Christmas from a friend, and I think it's really cool. I love the orange uh, rule on it. Uh, so I thought I'd try it out here with the currently inked. Um, so let's start here with the uh, Estabrook Esty. As I said, this is uh, one of my favourite purchases from this year. I, I really love this pen and I love that cushion cap. Um, let's unscrew the body. There we go, that's better. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's this cool, really cool sort of capping mechanism. Um, and as I said, I've got this inked with um, Detrimentous Sherlock Holmes. This is a medium. You can see that it writes a beautiful line. Obviously, this is the modern Estabrook uh, owned by Kenro, uh, not the original vintage Estabrook. Um, be interesting to get one of those as well, actually, on the vintage Estabrook pens as a, uh, out of interest. Uh, this ink, as I said, is a De Atramentus Sherlock. I think it's called Night Blue in its other format as well. That's what they um, they rename inks already in their lineup with like famous names and people and characters and things like that. So that's where the Sherlock Holmes comes from. Um, yeah, really, really, really like this pen and really, really like this ink. It's sort of a, I suppose you could say it's a slightly sort of dark, sort of dusty blue in a way. I but it's just I think it's a really beautiful color. Next we have the Lamy Studio. Great pen, love it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Everyone's got their own opinions on this pen. I really like it. Um, it's the Lamy Studio. Once again, this is a medium. And the ink is Diamine. Blood orange. Beautiful pen. Love this ink. Uh, and gosh, it actually looks great on this paper. That's very cool. It puts in a nice wet line in the studio. Quite happy with that. Then the Faber Castell Emotion. Um, if you want to see someone talk about this pen in some pretty uh, excited terms, watch some of SBRE SBR e. Brown's videos from a couple of years back. He, yeah. That's why I bought this pen, and I'm so happy I did. So, Faber Castell makes some of the best, or have some of the best uh, steel nibs on the market. I think uh, they're smooth and well tuned. Another medium. Um, as I said, the ink is Colorverse Hubble. Zoom. I'm going to be interested to see if this ink sort of cruds up in the nib. I've had a couple of Colorverse inks sort of do that a little bit. Um, so in, in these sort of brown red sort of tones, it's easy to, for that to happen. So I'm interested to see sort of what, what happens with um, this one. But yeah, it's a really lovely color. All right, 
Next, we have the Humble Pilot Metropolitan. Um, shame about the price change on these coming up, but uh, still a really great value pen. And ink is Robert Oster. Khaki. Uh, interesting colour. Uh, there's a Robert Oster ink that I'm going to be reviewing uh, fairly early on in the new year, uh, a new one, which is not dissimilar, uh, perhaps just a little bit sort of lighter, um, but a really unique colour nonetheless. Then we get the Monteverde Ascenza, uh, which is sort of, I've got this in this blue sort of colour. I love the facets of this pen, uh, and as I said, this is one of the, the best. Um, stub nibs that I have in my collection for the way that I write. It's really lovely. Um, just give it a quick little shake to move that ink around a bit. And what we have here is the Monteverde Senza. This is a 1.1 millimeter nib. And the ink here is Robert Oster Peppermint. Candy, which is the shake and shimmy version of the uh, the uh, peppermint ink that of Roberts that is so well loved and rightfully so. It's a beautiful colour. Um, I'm not sure how if the camera's going to be able to pick up any of that, but there's a the shimmy on this is subtle. It's not overbearing. Um, in the right light, it picks it up quite nicely. I'm just not sure if the camera's going to pick it up in this in this case. Maybe a little bit. Um, yeah, love that colour, very festive. Then last is this, as I said, the Faber-Castell School Fountain Pen. Um, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, uh, here is the, the, you know, it comes in this. So it's the Schulfühler uh, Fountain Pen. So yeah, it's a basic off the rack fountain pen with the basic nib on it. It's got this sort of odd shape. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be quite shaped like that but that's the way mine came. Um, I put a, you can put, it's an international cartridge converter, I put a converter in it so that I could use other ink. Um, so we'll just call this the Faber-Castell. School. Fountain pen. And I think this is a medium. The ink here is Lamy Black. And, you know, for $12 Australian or whatever the pen cost, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here. I like it. And I like it as a sort of an everyday writer. I like the shape of this pen. This is like a classic, simple, elegant design. The clip is springy. Um, it's not a flashy pen. I like that sort of patterning. I don't know how well that's pick, being picked up, but it sort of looks like carbon fiber sort of look to it, but it's very much just plastic. A really nice, simple pen. And, uh, that's my lineup at the moment. Okay, now I'm back with uh, the second part of this video. Um, here with my lovely Christmas mug uh, and a cup of T2 lemongrass and ginger tea, which um, is just delicious. I love this stuff so much. Um, so obviously Christmas in Australia comes during summer, so it's, I'm wearing this sort of like horrible t-shirt jumper thing and it's boiling, but... Um, yeah, it, Christmas, it, you know, I, I love watching sort of like the uh, the Christmas videos from people, you know, in the United States and where it's snowing and it's freezing and that to me is like that, obviously, the sort of the, the epitome of sort of Christmas, but uh, here it's summer and we've got cricket and that's what Christmas is to us here in Australia and it is to me. Um, so I have, I've made some notes here and so, so, so please apologise. Um, I apologise for sort of looking down. I just wanted to make sure I sort of covered everything. Um, so this is like a wish list, if you will. Um, I, I'm i going to go through a few things that I want to see myself doing pen-wise and that I, um, you know, over the next year. And uh, a wish list with some items that I'd like to sort of get into my collection or what I'd like to see my collection develop in a way. Um, and so... 
yeah, here is, I'll just start, it's just easy that way. One thing that I, looking through my pen collection, one thing that I see that is sort of missing uh, is a bit more colour in the pens. I do tend to pick pens that are blues, blacks, greys, that sort of colour scheme. Um, occasionally I get things like the studio and the terracotta and a couple of safaris and things like that, but I want to add a few more colours. So things like, um, I'm going to get one of the, eventually hopefully get one of the uh, Leonardo Momento Zero pens in one of the brighter colours, the Visconti Mirage, things like that where I can get a bit of colour into my sort of collection uh, and hopefully the pens that you see at the end of next year will reflect a slight sort of change sort of in, in that for me. I have a few pens that are on my uh, wish list, everyone does, um, things like a Montegrappa Fortuna, um, I would really like to get, uh, and also the Aurora uh, Talentum pen, the matte black version, I think is a, like, I know I just said I want to get coloured pens, but that matte black pen looks stunning. Um, there's one particular Instagram user who shows it regularly, and I just, I'm pining after that pen, so that's high up on my list. Um, another pen that I'm really interested in, I think this is probably going to be a sort of more longer term addition to my collection, is the Mont Blanc JFK, but the blue version, not the burgundy version that came out this year. That blue JFK is just so beautiful, um, and I see them still at, at shops uh, and sort of, you know, Mont Blanc stores and um, a few sort of pen stores that I've visited. So still holding out that one of those will come into my collection in a sort of a, either a broad medium or something along those lines. It's a beautiful looking pen. The other pen that is eluding me and that I am just about ready to like spend my life savings on is a Twisby Micarta. It's not because I am particularly excited about the way the pen works, just because I want it in my collection. Uh, it's a really unique pen um, and particularly unique in the Twisby lineup. Um, I've got a lot of Twisbees. I've got the Back 700s, the 580s, 580ALR, all the, or well, not all the Ecos, I've got a few Ecos and the Goes and all of that stuff, Vac Mini and yeah, like I've got a lot of the Classic and the Precision and all that, but I don't have a Micarta and I'd really like one of those. Um, if you happen to have one that you lying around that you'd like to send my way, please feel free. Um, but yeah, it's, so those are the things that I'm really looking for, looking to sort of add to my collection this year uh, and then I'm looking forward to sort of part of pen collecting for me now and pen using is not so much about getting s tons and tons of pens it's about getting pens that I'm really interested in and there's a few there that I'm quite quite keen on I haven't decided which model of the Fortuna Montegrappa Fortuna that I want yet um, I really like the idea of the copper mule but there's a few others like some of those acrylics that look quite interesting so when it comes time to start thinking about it seriously I'm gonna have to really line up. Love to know your thoughts on what you like in, in that model as well. Um, now, the pens, here's some things that are not, uh, that, that I'm looking at sort of um, at, at adding. So one is the, I want another Pelican M805, I would, or M800 model size pen. There's a couple, I wouldn't mind one of the 600s as well, but the uh, 800 is, I'd like another one of those. I've been looking at the, the grey silver one, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, but as this is a wish list, I want to sort of go through things that I think should exist as well. And so one thing I would love to see Pelican come out with in that pen model is silver trim, but with, instead of the blue stripe, like a purple stripe. Purple is one of my favourite colours, I love purple pens, I love purple ink. Uh, three of my absolute favourite inks are purples, detrimentous, um, Hamilton or Aubergine, depending on which one you have, Lamy Dark Lilac, and then Ackermann uh, Simplicity's Violet. Great inks, great colours, and there's a bunch of purples that I love. Birmingham Andy Warhol, great colours. So get one of those, that 805 model with purple, and I would be buying that in a split second. And while we're on the subject of purple pens, uh, and actually a lot of this, looking at this list, a couple of these are, are purple related, funnily enough. I hadn't realised that. Um, uh, Twisby bring out limited edition Ecos, and they're great. The transparent ones are fabulous. One of the Twisby brand knockoffs is the Lamberto 3059, and I've done a little comparison video. Check it out if you're interested. It sort of shows the differences between the pens, and I'm not a huge fan of the Lamberto, but 
I have one that I put Alami nib on, Alami broad nib, and it is this one. It's the matte, the purple matte version. Now, I don't know how well the camera is picking this up. Um, I might throw a photo in of it here, um, or a close-up video over the top of this. But uh, it's a matte black in the same way that the Lamy Safari dark lilac sort of colour. Um, if Twisby came out with like a range of matte eco pens, but particularly one in this sort of purple, I'd buy one in every nib size as soon as they came out. I think this is such a cool looking pen. And the fact that Lambertou can do it for $3.49 means that Twisby should be able to do this as well. And I don't think I'd be alone in buying a bunch of these. While we're on the topic of purple still, another thing I would love to see this year is for Lamy to re-release Dark Lilac ink. That ink is so beautiful, and there's a mistake about it because it's so rare now. You buy, you spend so much money to buy a bottle, but re-release it, it would still sell off the shelves. No issue whatsoever. So I'd love to see that. Um, I would buy bottle after bottle of it. I think that it's one of the most beautiful inks. It performs so well, uh, and it looks great. And that sheen is just the right amount of sheen for me. You get that little hint of gold every now and again. Perfect. So that is something I'm interested in seeing. Last thing on my list is another thing, Falami. And this is something that's been beating around in the industry for a long time. One thing I would love to see is limited edition colours of the 2000. Now we had, we've got the Macrolon black, you've got the stainless steel and you've got I think the dark amber or something like that, whatever it's called, which is the, the darker steel version. How cool would it be to have like, even just sort of like plastic acrylic -y sort of pens, like, like the matte finishes on the Safari, that sort of thing, in the Lamy 2000 model. I think that would be spectacular. I think that would sell so quickly. There are, there are Chinese knockoffs of the Lamy 2000 that do exactly that. So this is something I would love to see. Uh, and I think once again, I would buy several of them. I'm sure everyone else around the place would be looking at, would be keen to get some of those as well. Like a dark forest green, or once again, the dark lilac purple color would be great. Um, but these sort of, yeah, these colors that like, particularly the matte colors I think would look great in the Lamy 2000 pen. And I think that's everything on my list. Um, yeah, like, I'd love to know what you're keen to see happen and what products you'd like to see come around. Um, I'd love to know what you're writing with uh, and how you're spending your holiday season. Um, drop me a comment and let me know what's happening. Let us all know. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching all my videos this year. A couple more to come out still, um, sort of wrapping up the year uh, and lots of interesting things coming up next year. So hope you found this video interesting. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you did. Uh, as I said, get in touch, drop me a comment, find me on one of my other platforms. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and all of that sort of stuff. I am at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, so let me know what you're up to over there. Get in touch if there are products you think I should be looking at. Uh, and if there's a way you'd like to support this channel, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your holiday season. Enjoy your pens. Enjoy your writing. And I'll talk to you later.